This is Dining Table Print and Play, and today we're going to talk about making custom dice. Many print and play games require dice with custom faces, and this might just be for theme, but it might also be because the game needs something other than a 1 6 chance of each result. You could print out a reference chart and roll a standard die, but then you have to spend half your game looking things up. So it's much nicer if you can create a custom die with the faces you need, and today we're going to talk about several different ways you can do just that. Probably the easiest way to make custom dice is actually just to take blank dice and draw them with a permanent marker. You can find blank cubes, which are essentially blank dice, in a number of games that you might be able to easily find secondhand, and you can also buy them from specialist dice retailers. You may be able to find cubes like this from teacher supply stores fairly cheap. And of course any cube will more or less function as a die, it doesn't have to have nice rounded edges. If you simply draw on the faces of the permanent markers, you can use a variety of different colours. So now you have your die, which rolls perfectly well, just like any other, because it is essentially just a regular die. And because it's permanent marker, the faces are pretty durable. The extra bonus trick here is that if you take a whiteboard marker and just scribble over some permanent marker on a glossy surface like this then you can wipe away the permanent marker you might need to do it a few times but it essentially lifts the ink off the surface if there's still some color left there then you can give it a quick spray of some alcohol such as whiteboard cleaner and it will help clean it off a lot quicker but you're left with a cube, even if there's some hints of colour left on it, that you can reuse for another game in the future. If the only spare dice you have are regular six-sided dice, then you can actually make some fairly decent custom dice just by printing out and sticking paper loops around them. And for this, obviously, you'll need to either customise and then print out your templates or print generic templates and draw on them with a pen or pencil before assembling them. There'll be a link in the description of the video for some templates that you can use for this method. For this method we'll print out our customised template on regular printer paper. And here I've trimmed it down to just the bits that we need. This will essentially make two strips for two loops, one one way and one the other way around the die. The templates are specific to specific sizes of die, so be sure to download the one that you actually need for the dice that you're using. You could, if you wanted to, pre-score all of these lines with a a scoring wheel on a rotary cutter you could draw on the backs with a ballpoint pen but to be honest precision isn't massively important for this method so I'm just going to fold and score by hand. Now we need to cut out the separate strips. I'm just going to trim along all of the crop marks here. And these are the bits that we need to keep. So now we need some method of attaching them and for this I'm just going to use double-sided tape because it's, it's quick and simple. You could use glue, you could use regular tape and tape over the outside. The specific method doesn't massively matter. So first of all we take the strip that only has two die faces on. I'm going to prepare a little bit of the double-sided tape to stick on this end. This grey section here is going to be the bit that we won't see at all because it's going to get glued over, so I've put my double-sided tape on there in advance. And now I simply wrap it around the die. And at this point it doesn't really matter which particular side we wrap it around, we need to snug it fairly tight and just drop that over the top. And then we just need to trim off this tab. You can either place it on a table and run a knife along there, like so. Or, in most cases, you can simply take a pair of scissors and trim it off like that. The only important thing is just that it's not sticking a long way out to easily catch. Then we do exactly the same with the other strip of paper. And again, I'm just fixing a bit of double-sided tape on there in advance. This time, we start off by wrapping the paper over the, the two blank faces of our inner strip. And if you can, find the face which actually has the, 
the doubling up, which in this case is this side face, start your other strip on the opposite side because, you know, if you are worried about the ever so slight imbalance, this will balance it out properly. And again, wrap the paper all the way around. Drop that last one over the top once it's nice and snug. If there's any overlap there, trim it off. In this case, it's fine. And there you have a die which has your six custom faces. Again, because it actually does have a real die inside, that weight will keep its structure. It will allow it to roll fairly decently. If you do have any concerns about the edges or the corners here, providing a little bit of bias, you can put the die in the palm of your hand and roll it around with your other hand. And this will just bend over all of those corners a little bit and snug it closer to the die itself. This is fairly easy to undo. If you don't want this die anymore, you can just slide these off. And you could potentially even just keep them like that, flattened in a game box and use the same generic six-sided dice for multiple games. What if you don't have any spare dice at all, not even a regular D6? Well, in that case, if you don't mind putting the effort in, you can make some pretty decent dice entirely out of paper. These are commonly known as origami dice. Um, they've been around for a while, and I'll link to a few different places you can see more information in the description of the video. For these, you will need quite a lot of folding, and you don't need to be massively precise. You'll print out a template on regular printer paper. You really do need to not go any heavier than regular printer paper for this. If you fold cardstock over multiple times, it will become very, very difficult to slot together. And to start with, we will simply cut the six different faces out, the individual squares along the solid black lines. And again, <clears throat> I've customized these before printing out, but you could just as easily print out the blank template and draw these symbols on yourself if you prefer. Precision is not massively important here. The only thing that really matters is that your folds are in the right place. So cutting them out, don't worry, none of these edges will end up being seen in the final die anyway. So quite a lot of the instructions are printed on here. We've got the order of all the folds we need to make. So first of all, we need to fold back along these lines which are labeled number one. And these are folded back away from the printed die face. Nearly all of the folds are. We need both of those number one folds. Next, we do the same thing, folding back the ones marked with a number two. And again, there's one, two of these. And you might want to note on the back side, we're folding these down to meet the crease from the first folds we made. Fold and crease and then unfold these for now. So if we flip this over for the third step, take each of these diagonal folds, the number two ones, one at a time, and then fold them back along this number one line at the top. And you want to fold this top edge in. So again, if you're looking at it, you fold this edge along the diagonal fold that we made before, pull down again along the number one fold, and you want to essentially form a crease along this number three line here. So that goes down, this comes across, and it forms a crease along there, along the number three dash. You'll need to unfold the first one of these before rotating it around 180 degrees and doing the other one in exactly the same manner. So again, we folded the diagonal across. We fold back down along the first crease we made. Flatten it at the top here and we want to bring it to a crease along this extra dash line for number three. Once you've made both of those folds, you need to kind of fold them both in at the same time. And this is a little bit tricky because this corner here goes right the way into this corner here formed by these folds. And this 
corner here goes right the way into that corner form, formed by these folds. So we need to kind of fold them both down at the same time, moving past each other. I'll do that again for you. Fold them both down at the same time, moving past each other. And push them right the way down into that corner at the bottom there. And then you should be able to flatten it down to form this shape. Make sure that everything is as, as flat and as tight together as you can get it. It should look something like this on the back. And then we just need to fold around these number four folds up in the corners around the back to form a point. And again, both ends fold it over the back to form a point. And that's what you'll see on the other side. This is our printed die face. Lastly, we take our, our number five fold here, and this is the only one that we fold back onto itself. And we just pull these two pointy ends back away from the printed face. So we're folding like that away from the printed face. Crease them down and you have a single printed face with these two triangular legs sticking out of it. And then we just need to do that five more times. Now we have all six of these assembled, we need to start putting the sides of the die together. And obviously the first thing to bear in mind here is if, there is, if it is important which particular faces go opposite which other faces, make sure you've sorted that out in advance. You end up with these faces that have these little triangular legs and on the other sides they have these little pockets. And the pockets coincidentally are also triangular, so you can slide the leg of one side into the pocket of another. And you won't get them completely snug together because obviously there's space for the paper to fold in there and um, you'll probably not have managed to make it completely accurate anyway. Um, certainly I haven't. So don't worry if there's slight gaps, there always will be. The first two are easy. The third one is a little bit tricky because you need to slot one face in there and another face in the side of the same piece at the same time. For these situations, it's best to leave them somewhat loose on both sides, like so, and just sort of slowly work them in. Remember that the pocket here on the inside is also a triangle. So you need to wobble it along in that axis. You can't push them that way. And just like slowly jiggle the two sides next to each other until you've formed the third face of your die. These little tiny holes at the corner here are quite common, don't worry about it. The fourth side is the same challenge as the third. Remember you can flex these slightly in order to make them curve around and, and into those pockets. Try not to push too much because you'll just end up bending everything and rounding off the currently relatively flat sides. By the time you get to the fifth and sixth sides, it gets considerably trickier. For the fifth side, we're going to have to be trying to slot in one, two, and also three of these legs into pockets at the same time, which is not that easy. 
in general you want to start at one side of the face so we'll start with this leg here and then work your way around clockwise or anti-clockwise doesn't matter doing one side's leg at a time in order get them to this point where they're all a little bit in and then just sort of slowly work it closer and closer together this one's the problematic one here and you may find it helps to get a pen or something similar and just sort of pull that out to a bit of a curve in order to help it slide in however you don't want to do this fifth side all the way in until you have started to assemble the sixth side as well because now you've got four of these legs to get in at the same time and this is by far the trickiest part of the whole operation you may find it helps to pre-round these legs a little bit just curve them inwards so that you find it easier to actually slide them into the pockets and then again we'll start with just one and work our way clockwise or anti-clockwise around the outside of that face we're attaching and then you end up with this um, monstrosity and you just need to slowly work it all together at this point you may find that it helps to pinch individual pairs of faces together one at a time once you get close you may also find that it helps to roll the die in the ball of your hand because that works each face in roughly the right direction all at the same time you're hoping you eventually will get close to a cube with this it is possible to make very neat origami dice like this it's also possible to end up with a bit of a mess but realistically you will still end up with something that rolls pretty decently considering you just made it out of paper because each of the sides has the same shape and the same parts and is slotted together in the same way it's relatively fair obviously the neater and the more tidy you make it the more fair it will be the more completely random and the less likely it will be to just favor one side or another Very broadly speaking, one of the ways that makes the nicest custom dice is simply to use stickers and stick them to the side of a regular die. And the easiest way to do this is by using a special indented die, which is simply a blank die that has slightly indented faces. And there's a, essentially a raised border around the outside of the die itself, which allows you to place a sticker and have the edges of that sticker protected slightly from being picked up at the edge by rough handling. Obviously, if you wanted to apply these stickers to a, a regular die, that will also work. Obviously, you need to be careful that your sticker doesn't overlap too far to the edge, because if it does hang off the edge, it's going to be much easier to pick it off by uh, rough handling. And some dice, such as this one, if you see that, have actually a round face, because they've been rounded over at all the corners, in which case you either need to punch out a round circular sticker for the face of this die or make a much smaller sticker to make sure that it's not easy to lift it up at these corners you can also get various different kinds of indented dice um, here's different colors of the regular square ones these are quite nice they're they're larger than usual so if you compare these to other sizes of die they're notably larger but they have round faces on so you can use a round craft punch to punch out your round stickers and stick those into the round indentation and they are not only protected but also very attractive. For this method we will have to cut out individual stickers for each of the faces of our die We're using stickers from the same game as before Tony Goes Deep Space D6 and I've printed off four dice worth here but I don't need that many. First of all we just cut out the individual stickers for the faces of the die and when you're cutting things like this out it's actually advantageous to stop either side of the cut don't just slice all the way through the paper because then you can keep these crop marks lined up for when you need to cut in the other direction 
When you are making stickers for dice, as I have done here, it's a good idea to laminate them. Because like that, the face is protected. Dice are one of those components you're going to be handling in your hands quite a lot, so if there's any grease or sweat or anything on people's fingers, then you don't want that rubbing off onto your die faces and making it look all grubby. So here we have one die's worth of faces, and each of these faces is slightly smaller than the indentation on our indented die. I'm actually going to use the knife again to pick up the corners of the backing paper here. And as we have done with stickers before, peel half the backing away so that the, the glue is exposed under half of the sticker. Position it, dab it down along the glue side, and then in this case we can use the knife to just retrieve the backing paper out from the back there and stick it down. Then we have one face of our custom die. We just need to do that another five times. And there we have probably the nicest feeling custom dice that's going to come out of this video. All of our faces are nicely printed, stuck to the outside of a, a good weighty fair die. It rolls well and rubbing over the top there, you don't actually get at the edges of the sticker, so it remains undamaged. Okay, so there you go. There's several different ways of making print and play game dice. Ranging from entirely out of paper, the, the cheat and easy method, to pretty nice, pretty solid and lasting dice for your print and play games. There are a couple of other options still, and if you want to match the, the quality of commercial games that have custom dice, uh, we're talking about things like King of Tokyo, Elder Sign, the Quarrier series, things like that, which have engraved dice, where the, the design is actually sunken into the surface of the die itself and filled with paint. That is an entirely different question. It is possible to do it at home, but it involves special, more specialist equipment and it is harder to get right. In the future, I will do a video on using a cheap laser engraver, which you can buy pretty inexpensively over the internet to engrave the faces of a plastic die such as this. It is possible to use the end of a Dremel tool using a, a burr to cut away the face of the die, but that obviously involves a steady eye and a fine motor control. So it's, it's not something you can easily do without a little bit of practice first. These, items, these things will be covered in an upcoming video, but this is the basics of die making for your print and play games. Have fun and uh, good luck with your own projects.